to our program. So before uh, 1960s and all, you have only digital ICs like TTL and CMOS with fixed functionality. No other user have uh, user have no option to change or modify their functionality. That is, they work according to the design given by the manufacturer. User expected from these ICs, designers started thinking of a methodology by which the functionality of an IC can be modified or changed. So this modification idea basically uh, uh, give the momentum uh, to create a programmable ICs in the industry. So this is a classification of logic circuit with respect to standard, uh, with respect to the programmable programmable capacity. The first cap uh, st uh, uh, classification is standard logic circuit. Here you can see uh, the function, realized single function or set of function once defined with no possibility of changing. So it is a one-time programmable device. Uh, the manufacturer only can design the functionality of the device. When it comes to the programmable logic, the hardware can configure any time by the user. That is the benefit of programmable logic. Using in IC, using classic uh, product or ICs to different categories. As a system for scale integration, with system like that as a ultra large scale integration. So, come device, we can start here from this to the most common and fixed function integrator. So, as I already said, uh, fixed function integrated circuit, uh, the manufacturer is programming the device. User uh, cannot configure the device according to their need. So this is a deep package, this is a chip, and these are the peripherals. Now, so we are going to the topic programmable logic device or PLD. In many applications, PLD has replaced the hardwired fixed function logic device. So we will look into the applications and all in the next slide. So these are the different types of PLDs. SPLD, CPLD, FPGA. SPLD, Simple Programmable Logic Devices. CPLD, Complex Programmable Logic Devices. And FPGA, Field Programmable Catering. These are the major types of programmable logic devices. And we can uh, program the device with two methods basically. One is schematic entry, another is text based entry. So now we are going to look into the internal architecture of all these logic devices. So before analyzing the architecture, we need to understand the symbology we are using for the architecture. Okay, so these are the two symbols we are using to represent the programmability of an hardware. If we use this symbol, this one specifies that this is a fixed connection. It is not reconfigurable or reprogrammable. And this is a second symbol. This symbol represents that this is a, a programmable or reconfigurable connection. And uh, these are some circuits or some gates with uh, symbolic representation. Here, we are using the fuse structure. That means it is connected and the input is given to the uh, gate inputs of the gate. Also, depends on the gate's property, 
we classified the uh, programmable logic devices into three categories. One is PROM, PROM programmable read-only memory. Second one is programmable array logic. Third one is programmable logic array. So this is the most important part. The first block we can see in PROM, the AND array is fixed. So that means we are no, not using this kind of fuses. It is not programmable. We will use fixed connections. But in the case of OR array, that is programmable. That means we can use fuses or pass transistor to make it is reconfigured. The second category is programmable array logic. This is just opposite to the PROM or PROM. The AND array is programmable and the OR array is fixed. So this is a second classification, PAL, programmable array logic. The third one is programmable logic array. In this case, the both arrays, like AND array and OR array, both arrays are programmable. So these are the three classifications of programmable logic device. And this is a structure of PROM. In this structure, we are giving two inputs A and B with non-inverted and inverted input. And the AND arrays are, like we said in the block diagram, AND arrays are fixed. There is a fixed connection. So for this gate, we are getting a min time of A bar, B bar. For the second connection, we are getting A bar, B. Third connection, A, B bar. Fourth connection, a, B. So these are the min terms we are creating using this fixed AND array. And once the manufacturer is connected like this, it is not reprogrammable or reconfigurable. Now, all these min terms are available here. And we have a programmable OR array with fuses. In this connection, we can reprogram or reconfigure the device. For example, the function F1. We can create a Boolean expression in this OR function OR array in OR gate or this OR gate or this OR gate, any OR gate. For the first OR gate, what we've done is we connected here, 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 here. So all functions we are getting at the OR gate, first OR gate. And if you want to remove this min term, we can burn this few. So we'll get only these three min terms in this OR. So, depends on our need or application, we can use these fuses. Another symbolic representation is instead of using four lines, we can also use a single line. And we can connect like this. So, this is the representation of PROM, programmable read-only memory, with fixed AND array and programmable OR array. So this is the next category here. The AND array is programmable or array is fixed. So you can uh, just uh, go through the circuit here. This is a circuit of programmable array logic. We are using fuses to connect various inputs to the AND gates. From there, we are fixedly connected to the OR gate. From there, we will get the output functions or Boolean expressions. So let us analyze the first expression. The first output is W. And the W is the output of first OR gate. First OR gate, we are connecting the output of the first three AND gate. Let's look at to the first AND gate. In this first AND gate, we are connected A, B and C bar. So this min term will be output of the first AND gate min term will be A, B, C bar. And next next AND gate, here you'll get A bar, B bar, C, C bar. 
So this will be the second min time. Uh, third AND gate, we are not connected any input. So we will not get any kind of output from AND gate to OR gate. So we are now getting min times from the first two AND gates. So this is the function. A, B, C bar plus A bar, B bar, C, C bar. So this is a uh, method of programming in programmable array logic. Like that, you can also find out the outputs in X, Y, and Z. Very simple. Uh, we'll just look at the second output, X. So what will happen here? We are getting input to OR gate from two AND gate. The first AND gate min term is A. Second AND gate min term is B, C, D. So A plus B, C, D will be the output of the next gate. So like that, depends on our uh, need or requirement, we can reconfigure the device. So we already covered programmable array logic, programmable logic array, and programmable read-only memory. So first one is fixed AND array, then programmable OR array, that is PROM. Second one is programmable AND array, fixed OR array, that is PAL. Third one is programmable AND array and programmable OR array. Both arrays are programmable. So this is PLA. Oh, uh, so this is PLA circuit. Uh, I just uh, the slide I think. So in this circuit, as we can see here, the AND array and OR array. Both are programmable. So fuses are there, and uh, this is one symbolic representation, and this is another symbolic representation. And this is uh, the initial one was uh, the first hardware. We are not programmed anything. All fuses are in proper connection. Here we burn some fuses to get some Boolean expression. So. Let us look uh, the first output from first OR gate, Y2. In this uh, OR gate, what will be the expression, Boolean expression? Uh, first, last three AND gates are connected to the OR gate. So that means here we are connected A bar. This will be the min time at first AND gate. This will be the min time at second AND gate. And this will be the min time at third AND gate. So A bar, B, A, B bar. The so output will be A bar plus B plus A B bar. This will be the output for Boolean expression we will get at Y2. So we can program both AND array and OR array. So this is an example for programmable logic array. So now we covered all three programmable logic devices. Now we will go to the uh, uh, industrial devices that is using this kind of arrays. For the first exam category is SPLD. This is the least complex form of programmable logic devices. So pro programmable logic devices are using PAL, PLA, or uh, PROM. And depends on the complexity, we again classified the programmable logic devices into SPLD, CPLD, and FPG. First classification is SPLD. In this SPLD, uh, SPLD comes under SSI or MSI. That means small scale integration or medium scale integration classification. Usually, uh, industry is having 24 to 28 pin SPLDs are available. Uh, with the categories are PAL, GAL, PLA, PROM. We are using all these kind of architecture or arrangement for SPL, creating SPLD. Another classification is CPLD, Complex Programmable Logic Devices. This one is having much higher capacity than SPLD. So that means uh, more number of uh, logical gates and programmability uses. That means we can create more complex function in this CPLD compared to SPLD. The CPLD is equivalent to 2 to 64 SPLDs. So that is the uh, capacity of CPLD. Uh, it, is, it is much complex 
than uh, the CPLD device. And in industry, you will get 44 pins to 160 pin packages, depends, depending upon the complexity of the CPLD devices. So there are several forms of CPLD which vary complexity and programming, programming capability. And we will look at the architecture of the CPL. So the basic architecture of CPLD contains a functional block, interconnect matrix, and IEO block. These are the three blocks of CPLD architecture. The functional block contains the uh, uh, programmable uh, logical circuits like PAL or P, uh, uh, PLA. And interconnect matrix basically helps to connect between the blocks and also between the blocks and IO input output blocks. And this input output blocks, through this port, the external environment can communicate to the CPLT device. So this is the basic architecture of CPLT. Functional block is will be there. Inside functional block, we can uh, create different types of uh, logical devices and, or we can create different types of Boolean functions. And using this interconnect, we can connect between functional block and also functional block to the external world. This is another architecture figure. Here also you can see different IO blocks, the connecting channel or the connection matrix and uh, logic blocks. So this is an example for CPL. As I said, uh, there are different packages available in industry uh, for CPLD. These are the examples. One is 84 pin PLCC package. Another is 128 pin PQFP package. We'll just compare uh, the CPLDs with our TTL ICs like 7400, 7402. We have only 14 pins to 16 pins, and that also in deep package. Compared to uh, those kind of uh, devices, this one is much complex. Uh, even the pin itself shows that how much complex is the system. We have 128 pin and 84 pin. Now we have the next category. It is FPG. It is Field Programmable Gator. It is slightly different from SPLD and CPLD. And the greatest capacity compared to any other logical devices. The greatest capacity itself shows that it is having more number of logic blocks and transistors. Consists of an array of anywhere from 64 to thousands of logic gates or groups that are sometimes called logic blocks. So like since CPLD, CPLDs also have logic blocks, but compared to CPLD, FPG is having 64 to 1000 uh, logic blocks are available. You see two classifications of FPGA, coarse-grained and fine-grained classifications. And FPGA pins, uh, uh, the industry, FPGA ca comes from uh, more than up to 1,000 pins or more. Means uh, CPLD, we have only uh, 128 pins or 84 pin package. But, but for FPGA, we have thousands or more pin package available. That much complex system. And this is the architecture of an FPGA. Uh, like a CPLD, it is also have three blocks, CLB, switch matrix, IOB. CLB stands for configurable logic block. Then switch matrix basically programmable interconnects. And third one category is IO block. So these are the three building blocks in Build programmable data. So we look into each part. Another architecture figure. These are the CLBs. These are the connection lines. Okay. Now, this is a logical element or a CLB. Configurable logic block. This is a simple one. It depends on the uh, FPGA family, the complexity of the logical blocks will change. This is the most simplest form to understand uh, the basics. Uh, I'm just uh, explaining the basic uh, CLB element. 
in this CLB, we have a lookup table and also we have flip-flops and also multiplexer then buffer. These are the basic structure of a CLB. The purpose of lookup table to create Boolean expressions. So it depends on the requirement or depends on our need, we can create different types of Boolean expressions using uh, lookup table. And also we can make the circuit to a sequential one using a clock. Most of the, all the FPGA is manufacturing with a global clock. So using a global clock, we can create a sequential circuit with FPGA. So this is a CLB, configurable logic block or logical element. This is the structure. So we are using multiplexer, flip flop, and lookup table. So the various functions implemented inside the lookup table. Here, uh, this one is for 3 to a decoder. So we are using 3 input, then uh, 8 output. So this uh, functionality or truth table we can create using our lookup table. And uh, we will get the output here. If you need to make it sequential, we can use this block. This is uh, one example of FPGA family, XC3000 PLB. In this structure, uh, more number of transistors and uh, CLBs, and the complexity of CLB is slightly higher compared to the first one. Here we have more number of multiplexer, flip-flops, and then uh, lookup table is having more number of inputs. So this is an example of CLB. Another block is programmable interconnect. So we already covered the first two blocks. The first block was um, these are the three blocks. Configurable logic block. So what is configurable logic block? We can create Boolean expressions uh, with the help of programming. And with, uh, with that, according to that program, the lookup table will create the Boolean expression. So programmable logic. And uh, next block is programmable interconnect. Programmable interconnection versus uh, FPGA provides a routing path to connect input and output of the IO blocks and CLB. So uh, IO blocks and CLB into logic network. So in the connection, to establish the connection between logic blocks and also to the uh, input output or to the external world, we are using uh, programmable interconnect. So using programmable interconnect, the CLB can communicate to IO blocks or CLB can communicate between uh, each other. So all these are are made possible by the programmable interconnect. You can use uh, pass transistor, especially design a pass transistor is controlled by a configuration bit, uh, form programmable interconnect points and switching matrices used to implement the necessary connection between selected metal segment and block points. So when you are implementing a system, uh, we are not 100% utilizing uh, the CLB blocks. Maybe we are uh, selecting one, two, or maybe 100 CLB blocks in the FPG. So whichever the block we are selected for implementing a system, all these blocks are interconnected with the help of PIP or programmable interconnect point. A programmable interconnect point is a pass transistor controlled by a memory cell. The wire segment of each side of the transistor are connected depend on the value in the memory cell. The pass transistor introduces the resistance into the interconnected path and hence delay OK. So uh, one uh, aspect is that when we are using this kind of pass transistor model of programmable interconnect, the interconnect is made programmable, but there will be the, it will create a path delay. That means uh, when you create a system, in that system, Apart from the uh, gate delay, it, it also produces a considerable path delay. So we have both. We need to consider when you are implementing a system, we need to consider both path delay and gate delay. Okay. Sir, uh, so, we have few questions in the Q&A section. Okay. Uh, first question is: 
what is generic array logic and how does it differ from PA and PLA? Okay, uh, yes, it is basically almost similar to PROM, but the difference is the difference is that uh, the ROM is electrically erasable. So that is the only difference between GAL and other logic. In PROM, it is not electrically erasable. That is a structural difference, and uh, I will send you the details. Uh, if if they send me mail, I will send the complete stru structural details. Any other doubts? Uh, the next question is uh, difference between FPGA and microcontroller. Okay, fine. So FPGA basically uh, that, that's why I shown you uh, the structure of the uh, transformer board. Uh, in microcontroller. We are creating a uh, creating an architecture. Uh, for let us take an example of 8051, or let us take an example of Atmega 328. Atmega 328 is a microcontroller inside Arduino. Uh, uh, you know. So uh, after manufacturing the microcontroller, it is impossible to change the architecture in, inside that microcontroller. We, we can just give the program according to the architecture. If architecture is not having that capability, for example, let us take an example. Suppose uh, the architecture inside at Mega 328 support 10 bit ADC. And you are going to uh, design a system uh, that needs 12 bit ADC. So at that moment, uh, when you are using at Mega 328 microcontroller, it is impossible to use that system. But if you use FPGA, we can create a 12 bit ADC. We can uh, Suppose the FPG is having 10 bit ADC, we can reconfigure it to 12 bit ADC. So that means the hardware itself we can change in FPGA using a hardware description language. But in microcontroller, whatever the hardware available or existing, we can only make use of that. So that is the difference between FPGA and microcontroller. I hope you are uh, clear about the difference. Uh, yes, sir, that is a, that's all. Two questions we have in the Q&A session. You can please continue. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we are discussing about FPGA. There are many industries. Uh, they are manufacturing FPGA with different types of architecture. Uh, these are these are the uh, different examples of FPGA vendors. Xilinx, Ultra, Atmel. That is, they are using SRAM based FPGA and flash, flash and anti use kind of FPGA, Actel and Qlogic. These are the various FPGA vendors available in, in the world or in the market. And Xilinx and Ultra share 60% of the market. Usually, in any academy or any industry, if you go or if you observe, most of them are using FPGA manufactured by Xilinx or FPGA manufactured by Ultra. These are the different applications of FPGA. Uh, it is used in consumer electronics, security system, video image processing, defense, aerospace, wireless communication, medical electronics, any, everywhere we can use. Not only in this domain, now, nowadays, everywhere we are using FPG and they are replacing the uh, ASIC or um, uh, non-programmable IC. So, uh, the applications are uh, actually expanding every day, FPG applications. Uh, the benefit is that, suppose uh, if, you, if you are using in consumer electronics and if you want to upgrade the system, we don't need to change the hardware. You just need to go with a program, burn that program to FPGA. And according to that program, FPGA will reconfigure into a new structure. So uh, that means uh, the replacement of the material cost we can reduce using FPGA and also upgrade upgradation is also possible. So these are the various VLC industry and uh, there are a lot of career opportunities in this domain. Uh, EDA company, ASIC, FPGA, everywhere you go, you need to have a thorough or proper understanding of programmable logic devices. These are the leading companies, Xilinx, Altra, Texas Instrument, Intel, Cisco, uh, TSMC. TSMC basically create DSP uh, modules. Uh, so for all these systems, we need to have an understanding of programmable logic system. And also we need to understand the 
hardware description language. So I will uh, just demonstrate uh, one programmability of FPGA, how to program an FPGA and how to uh, create a program and how, and how to create a structure using that program. So that is the next example. So uh, as you can see, this is a truth table of a half order, sum and carry. And uh, with this truth table using graphical method or tabular method, we created uh, functions or Boolean expression for sum. The Boolean expression is AX or B. And for carry, the Boolean expression is AB. And this is the block representation. Two entities at the, at the input and two entities at the output. So this is the block diagram, truth table, and uh, circuit diagram or logical diagram. Now, this is our objective. Now, how to create the system in FPGA? So, uh, that is the real challenge. For that, we are using hardware description language. Using this language, we can express any hardware, uh, whether it is processor, whether it is DSP module, whether it is mathematical module, or whether it is any other uh, logical module, any kind of module we can create or express with the, with the help of HDL. And HDL basically introduced in 1970s. The first HDL language was uh, VHDL, VHIC, VHSIC HDL, very high speed integrated circuit HDL. So this was the first language. And in 1980s, uh, another language also introduced that language is very low. And this is inspired by the C programming language. Also in 1980s, this VHDL language is standardized. And 1990s, Verilog also standardized. Okay, so now we are using in industry two language, VHDL and Verilog uh, for creating uh, various hardware. So I will just uh, show you the demonstration of the Verilog program and how after burning or after doing the program, how it is... Uh, the architecture or the hardware is reading these expressions and how they are creating the hardware. So th that is the main objective of this course. Uh, we need to understand how the system is working. So here I am using a simulator and the simulator is uh, designed by Xilinx, one of the leading FPGA manufacturing company. The simulator name is ISC. So I will just uh, start create a new project. Is this uh, um, uh, tab is clear? This one icon, new project to start. Okay. So here uh, you can see product category: general purpose, automotive, military, radiation. And there are various applications. Any application we can use our FPGA module or programmable logic devices. I am just selecting general purpose. Here we can see various family. So all these are FPGA, or FPGA family created or made made by Xilinx. So the, all these devices we can simulate and program using Xilinx ISC simulator. This is an old simulator. Now the industry is using Vivado simulator. I don't have that uh, software, so that's why I am showing in this ISC simulator. I am selecting a, a hardware called Spartan 3E. This is a uh, logic family or FPGA family from Xilinx. And here we can uh, select the devices. Under Spartan 3E family, you have different types of devices depends on the hardware complexity. You can select any hardware. Depends on your project or your requirement. Another important factor you need to select is the language. So as I mentioned earlier, we have two hardware description language. One is Verilog, another is VHD. You can select anything. Now I created a project for a specific programmable logic device. So my objective is to design a half order. So this is the case 
where we can express our hardware using hardware description language. We have two inputs. I'll use the symbols A and B. And two outputs. So when, once you define the directions of the variable, IO blocks will work according to that. So here we have two entities as input and two entities as output. So from the truth table and from the uh, circuit diagram, it is clear that the expression for sum is AX or B. For that, we are instantiating XOR. And XOR is already inbuilt available in the, this software. So we just need to instantiate that XOR for this uh, expression. And also carry expression is A and B. So we just instantiated and get uh, in this tool. So now our program is completed. This is called structural programming, structural model. It just to explain the or express the structure, describe the structure of the hardware. So this was our objective. Okay, so now we made a block. So this is having two entity. This was our objective, two input entity and two output entity, some and carry and two inputs. So as I mentioned earlier, we have the logical blocks, inside logical block with our lookup table. So two lookup tables were taken, lookup table uh, from second block, eighth lookup table, eighth logical block, lookup table, uh, from the second block, sixth, sixth lookup table. Two lookup tables were taken for creating the Boolean expression. Uh, the first lookup table, let us see. So this one is for the carry. To create a carry, we need an AND gate, and this AND gate is created at the first lookup table. This was a truth table, and this was a KMR, KMR for the carry. And second lookup table, you can see truth table, for the sum, graphical optimization for the sum, and this is a schematic, A bar, B, A, B bar, then OR gate. So we are getting an XOR expression, A bar, B plus, A, B bar. So whatever we explained in the theoretical uh, portion, the same thing is actually we can uh, observe here also, look up table, and then buffer, then input. Uh, since it is a combinational circuit, we are not connected any clock. Or else we can see uh, the clock circuit and flip-flop and everything in this uh, schematic. Now, take some time. Okay, 
So uh, this is the internal structure of the FPGA that I selected. And these are the logical blocks. And uh, when a programmer is implementing a system, the programmer need to place which logic block and programmer need to uh, route the logic block to the output. So these are the logic blocks in the hardware. You can observe clearly. Yeah. Various slices available. These are the interconnects, programmable interconnects. Okay, so these are the hardware details. Uh, this is the programmable interconnect. These are the slices and we have IO blocks. So all these are under single system. We can analyze it using this. Now, apart from this, the advantage of using FPGA is that we have inbuilt cores. So that means When you are implementing a system, uh, let us take automotive system or communication system, DSP system, we have inbuilt system available in FPGS. So we don't need to do extra programming. We just need to burn this program to the hardware for filter, correlation, modulation, transforms, any applications, inbuilt cores are available in FPGS. So uh, the uh, implementation complexity is also reducing. So that is the advantage. So these are the, if you go through this kind of IP core itself, you will understand that you have a lot of applications in PLD, automotive industry application, communication and networking application, digital signal processing application, uh, various math function creation, then uh, bus interfaces, for example, PCA, PCA Express, all these are parallel communication standards. So we can implement this kind of uh, parallel communication based interface using FPGA. Then storage area network, video processing. So you, even video processing, image processing also we can implement using FPGA. So uh, that is why I explained in the uh, PPT that uh, we have different types of applications. So all these applications are possible using FPGA because we have that much hard, hardware capacity and complexity in your system. You just need to express all this uh, requirement in hardware description language. According to that language, FPGA will create the hardware. I think I completed the demonstration. Now, we'll just go through uh, the previous year questions uh, that were asked in from PLDs, programmable logic devices. Uh, this was the one question I have seen in uh, last year exam, 2018 exam. What are FPG and PLDs? Very simple question. So they are not asking uh, in-depth questions from uh, this uh, topic. Using suitable PLA, design a 4-bit binary to create converter. So we already know how to implement a, uh, a Boolean expression using PLA, PAL and PRO. Write a short note on FPG. That was also very... A simple question then P P A L P L A and FPGA. This was a 20 mark question. And what is FPGA? What are its applications? The block diagram explains its internal structure. So we already explained uh, the block diagram, three blocks, a CLP, interconnects, and uh, IO blocks. And we all, we all know we all already know what are the applications of FPGA and uh, what is FPGA. So these are some reference. Okay, if you have any doubt, you can ask. Okay. Uh, pardon, I am not able to. Um, this voice is not uh, clear. Can FPGA? Uh, sorry, sir. Can FPGA be used as a replacement for CPU? Yeah, definitely. Because uh, before creating uh, the processor, basically they are testing in FPG only. Uh, uh, and also, uh, right now, Intel, uh, they are creating a system with combination of uh, process, uh, processor and FPG. 
and in future i think they are uh, already going to the fpga kind of uh, processor because they can uh, reprogram it or you can update the architecture uh, definitely cpu can be replaced by fpga because uh, fpga has the uh, capacity and complexity to create a cpu system inside that fpga any other doubt Yes, sir. Uh, another doubt is regarding the simulator used. Is the simulator used for the demonstration freely available for the students? Uh, uh, this is an older simulator. This is called ISC simulator. Uh, Vivado also available in, uh, in the internet. You can download, but uh, we can you can only implement uh, less complex circuit using Vivado if you if you don't have the license. If you purchase the license, you can uh, create uh, bigger systems and. Uh, more complex system. Otherwise, you can download Vivado. The name is Vivado. Uh, you, uh, if you have doubt, just mail me. I will send you all the details about the uh, open source and all this kind of uh, simulator and tools we are using to uh, design programmable logic devices. These are students are asking your mail ID. Uh, they are asking to display yeah, sure. the mail ID once again. Ah, sure. sure. So these are uh, my communication. Uh, this is my official mail ID, and this is my IEEE mail ID. You can send your queries or uh, any of this. Mail. And if you want to implement any system as a part of your course project, uh, definitely you can use FPGA. Uh, you can implement, uh, and also the testing is also very easy. Uh, if you want, if you have time, I can show you how the test benches work. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, uh, those were the questions in the Q&A section. Uh, sir, you can... I, I will show you uh, how to uh, check the functionality. Okay, so this is called test bench. So whatever we created uh, or express using hardware description language, we can check its functionality. So here, whatever we uh, defined as input entity will come as register, and the output entity will come as wire. Now we need to begin with the values. So here, initially, I have given 0, 0 at the input. After that, I will give 0, 1. Another three input combinations: zero, 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 one, one, one. Just to understand how it's working. Actually, I uh, installed with IEC simulator, but uh, the simulator uh, right now it's uh, showing model sim. So uh, I need some time. So I, I will mail you the details and all about the simulation. Uh, here we need to see IEC simulator. I will show you this. These are the properties that you selected. Here right now in this tool, I can see only model sim and 
ECS simulator. So once you have ECS simulator, you can easily check for the functionality of the device. To check the functionality, you need this test bench. So in this test bench, you can give input like this, which, uh, zero zero. Stands for hash term stands for the delay nanosecond delay in nanosecond. So uh, after input zero zero, it will wait for ten nanoseconds and it will give input zero one. So and it will work uh, for second input. And after again ten nanoseconds, it will work for one. So once we verify the functionality using the simulator, we will burn all this program to the hardware. For that, we need to connect the hardware. Then we need to configure the target. So this is the option for configuring the target. So right now I don't ha have the hardware, so I'm not connected the hardware. If you connect the hardware, it will show here. Then we just need to burn it. So once you burn the uh, program to the hardware, uh, depends on the lookup table we mentioned, we can place it there. The two lookup tables they will use for the hardware. And uh, we will get the hard, uh, half order circuit in FPGA. And uh, like one uh, one of you asked about CPU, you can create the processor, 4-bit processor, 8-bit processor, 16-bit processor, or 32-bit processor. Uh, once you express the processor uh, hardware or architecture in HDL language, you can burn that hardware to the FPGA, then FPGA will act as a processor. Any other doubt? There are no other doubts. Uh, can we summarize the session? Yeah, sure. So, uh, our topic was PLD. In syllabus, basically, uh, they are not covering this much depth. It's simply asking about uh, these two categories, PAL, PLA, and uh, PROM. From. And uh, all these are made with the help of uh, programmable logic gates and for program we are using this kind of symbology and uh, we are using arrays of AND, array and or array depends on the programmability of arrays we are uh, differentiating all these devices with the help of these arrays we are created SPLD, CPLD and FPGS and these are the various architecture these are the ICs available in industry with different set of packages uh, for example, if you want to implement a 4-bit processor, you don't need to Im you implement using FPGA. You can use CPLD. CPLD hardware is enough uh, to design a 4-bit processor. But it, when it comes to 16-bit or 32-bit processor, you need a bigger system, bigger FPGA. And uh, we need F uh, uh, different types of family like that I shown here. Yeah, uh, Xilinx or Ultra family, they have vertex or higher versions of FPGA family with billions of transistors. So transistor count and logic blocks are the important factor. Using this factor, uh, basically, uh, it will that will decide how much bigger system we can implement in FPGA. And these are the application. Everywhere we can use FPGA, we can replace microcontroller or any other system uh, because this is reconfigurable. And once you need to update or upgrade the system, you just need to give burn the HDL program. According to our program, you can uh, create any kind of hardware. So finally, we'll just conclude that this is uh, simply like a simply like a transformer board. So it can change to any structure, bigger structure, smaller structure, depends on our need. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your valuable session. Thank you, participants, for this session. Okay, and so we are uh, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a request. Can we get this presentation? Uh, definitely, I will share with Lakshmi, and she will share to you. Or also, you can mail me about uh, your doubts. I will reply in that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir.